A couple of weeks ago, I wrote a column about uh, my neighborhood, next door neighborhood, which is to Toronto Danforth, and where uh, the city councillor there, uh, a former Communist Party leader from Manitoba, who uh, qualifies as the quintessential Sharia Bolshevik. What I mean by that is the new left wing admiration for all things medieval, if and only if that medieval ideology comes from uh, the self-professed uh, victims of white racism in the West. And who are these? These are my lovely Muslim community in Canada. What she did was she allowed and permitted a downtown mosque to start broadcasting the evening call to prayer on four loudspeakers pointed towards east, west, north and south and called it beautiful. Now what is very charming about this whole move is that as Muslims we are required to be truthful in whatever we say and specifically and specially when we are fasting in Ramadan. My colleagues who run the show of infiltrating every political institution in this country came out with the most blatant lie which said that since Muslims are not are staying away from the mosque, they would like to hear the call to the prayer at home and therefore irrespective of the noise pollution or the hurt uh, such a prayer would cause, they would like it to be broadcast and like every other guilt-ridden right or left-wing uh, white person, the mayor of Toronto, the mayor of Mississauga, the mayor of uh, Bramptistan and the mayor, even the city of Ottawa said, oh what a wonderful idea. And so they allowed this broadcasting of this prayer in the evening without ever talking about those who fled to Canada from lands where the call to prayer was a call to arms. And I'll tell you why this was hypocritically uh, hypocritical and a lie is, let's look at the prayer itself. It starts with the declaration, Allah is great, Allah is great. Well, no problem about that, except Allah Akbar is a battle cry as well. Then it says, I bear witness that there is no God other than Allah. So if you believe that your God is Bhagwan or Jesus or Yahweh or the Baha'is God or Buddha, whatever. No, 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 no. All of you count for nothing. We are going to broadcast this on loudspeakers that your God does not count for anything. There is no God other than Allah. I bear witness that there is no God other than Allah. Twice you repeat that. I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger. I bear witness. Well, that's fine. And then there's that catch with the Muslim leadership said, oh, we want to hear the call to prayer because we can't go to the mosque. Guess what the call to prayer says? Hurry to prayer. Hurry to the prayer. Hurry to salvation. Hurry to salvation. Allah is great. Allah is great. There is no God except Allah. Now imagine, well, if I was a politicized Muslim seeking Muslim rule over the rest of the world, I'd be thrilled. But the fact is that there is Islam and then there is Islamism. While Islam is a faith between oneself and one's creator, Islamism is the use of that Islam to score political advantage, whether it be in India, where very actively my uh, co-religionists work towards that end for the last thousand years, or here in the West, where the more educated the people are, more liberal and left-wing they are, they tend to be more medieval, which is a tragedy in itself. So sowing the seeds of division within society has suddenly become free for all and every politician has said that irrespective of the hurt that it causes to those who have been victims of Islamic 
terrorism in Iran or to ISIS or in Pakistan or in India who have come here seeking the separation of religion and state. Now imagine yourself to be a Baha'i or a Buddhist or a Hindu or a Jew or even a Sikh or an atheist. Well, atheists are always on the side of medieval uh, radical Muslims, so I've never figured that combination. But imagine if you are a religious person and the sound is being pushed into your living room that there is no God, that your God counts for nothing and that Allah is the greatest. It's not their fault that Allah Akbar is you being used as a battle cry for ISIS, for Tablighi Jamaat, for Jamaat Islami, for Al Qaeda, for Boko Haram, to every Islamic terrorist group. The battle cry is Allahu Akbar. And that you are broadcasting this into the neighborhoods of decent, common, good uh, Canadians who open everyone. Uh, who, who open their arms to everyone who seeks refuge? Is this how we pay back? That we're telling a society built on Judeo Christian background, who wants separation of religion and state, who does give the right of you to pray, we go to the politicians and then bargain our vote banks to these shameless people who submit to it. I know of at least one member of parliament who is Jewish and she's become a Muslim. Perhaps she's the only one of her kind. But votes are votes. Is this the Canada of Jean Chrétien or Ed Broadbent or even Maroney? We ended up in a country where anybody can bully anyone to say anything and get away with it. The lie that you want people to hear the call to prayer because they can't go to the mosque and in that call to prayer you said come to the mosque, come to the mosque, come to prayer, Ayyal al -fala. Oh my God! Ordinary people don't have the hundreds of millions of dollars or at least a million dollars to fight the, these people in court. I know of three groups fighting this and they don't have the money to do this because the politician does not listen to the ordinary voter. If you're not categorized and broken up into uh, ethnic groups and ghettos, the politician doesn't care for you. You can't bring 50 people to a nomination meeting and win the nomination. You can't do anything. The common goodness that made Canada what it is, is under threat and is under threat from a group that seeks our destruction. No religious Muslim will back away from the call to jihad. And we know what is being taught, how the afternoon prayer, how 72 times a day we are saying bad things about Jews and Christians. And you, if you're a Muslim and I'm a Muslim, we both know what it is. And on Friday when we say, oh God, Give us the strength of the Muslim nation to defeat the Kuffar. And we know who the Kuffar is. This is not the first time. Councillor Fletcher helped, how should I put it, extremist, radical or religious Muslims put up the Pakistan army's battle cry in the heart of little India. This is a few years ago. Nasrum min Allah fathum Karib. That's, that's the battle cry of the Pakistan military being paid for by the city of Toronto to insult Indo-Canadians at the hands of Pakistani Canadians. Because Indo-Canadians are too busy, you know, making good fortunes, having great weddings. They're not politically active at all, unlike the Pakistanis who seem to be present in every aspect of our society over here, whether it's the RCMP, the Toronto police, whether it's CSIS, whether it's the mayor's office, the prime minister's office, everywhere. So for goodness sake, I'm asking Muslim Canadians to stand up for their country, not for their mosque. Until next time, take care. See you.